The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At the time, while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned and noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, <coughs> See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and turmoils, be not be be not do not be afraid for these things must first take place and the end will not be at once then he said to them nations will arise against nation and kingdoms against kingdom there will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences and there will be terror and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hand on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisoners, prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle in, therefore, in your minds, not to men meditate beforehand how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear friends in Jesus Christ, hope you all can see me. I'm not that tall, yet the word says, because it's the end of time, we are coming, we are heading towards the end of the liturgical year, as I said in the gospel. So readings are designed in such a way that we are reminded of our own death, kind of our own end of the world. The Catholic, uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that immediately after our death, there would be immediate judgment, and then end of the world, there is the proper judgment waiting. So all would be come up, come out from all of our graves that day. So God knows, only He knows when that is going to happen. The Lord, is, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord clearly says, that even the Son of Man does not know the time when the end is going to happen. I mean, not my personal death. Of course, that's the kind of end of my world. But then rather the particular, the, the literary, the, the, the end of the times. 
even the angels they don't know but then sad to say some pastors they know what is the <laughs> the end of the time and they say end is near and end is near the the second reading taken from the book of rated to thessalonians and in the thessalonians also they thought jesus would come immediately because the persecution is so strong he they thought he would come immediately so they took it for granted and they waited without doing anything so just just idled just waited because the lord is coming useless of doing something because everything will would come to end so that was the idea that's exactly why saint paul is saying if you don't work you should not eat christian notion of death christ christian notion of our end of the world is different my dear friends you have to understand that we don't look at things negatively jeevitang aniyatang maranang niyatang you know everything is in vain vanity 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 so everything is that's useless everything is useless and we 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 have something called pilikul bhavana you think about the ebbing away of the things and we despise everything and we we go to a kind of a ivory tower existence we leave everything and go to himalayas and meditate no that's not christian life Christian life we are called to be jubilant vigilant and also joyful all the time looking at the end we are not we are looking at it in a very different perspective my dear friends every of course of course our our, our idea our complete notion our target our, our aim should be jesus no one else sin in hebrew is hamartia which means your 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 distracted your focus is gone so in the world once you harbor here once you journey here once you once you begin to live here you begin to greed we get greedily possess things you miss the focus all the time satan's foc satan satan's focus is to miss your focus so that's why now when it comes to the temple my dear friends when it comes to the temple and when the temple was it was a great great structure built by herod herod it was it was constructed and rebuilt by herod in first century and it's a, it took about 43 years to build that temple after after babylonian exile my dear friends the originally this temple was built by king solomon it was a, one of the greatest greatest structures buildings ever built and now now for jews this temple was their pride you know it was significant for three reasons one thing that was the place of worship all the jews all the jews had to come to jerusalem especially for three feasts feast of tabernacles feast of passover and 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 another feast so they used to come there so wherever they were, they were even they when they were exiled they had to come to jerusalem that's exactly exactly how jesus even jesus of nazareth came to jerusalem to worship so that was important because it is that it is a place for worship and also they believed jehovah shamma which means the presence of god they believed god dwelled completely the true presence is only in jerusalem temple and thirdly they believed heaven and earth was met in jerusalem that's exactly why the temple was so important in their lives even they could die for that temple i have been to jerusalem my dear friends in one of my holy land tours still we find the wailing wall if you have seen that jews even today they they bang their head on the wall that only wall spared after the war and they think the the lord is dwelling there only my dear friends the lord is saying they were speaking about you know about that grandeur with lot of proud pride he was speak they were speaking about the temple 
Jesus could have just waited without saying anything isn't it for what why the lord is disturbing them let them have their fun let them have their way why to disturb but i remember jesus is the word of god in hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 the word is like a double edged sword it should pierce your heart the word is like a fire it should consume your pride word is like a hammer we call it makabi last sunday we got the gospel first reading from the letter from makabi which means hammer it should shake you and break you crush you it should disturb you don't ever expect god to be a consoler all the time the lord is saying the lord is saying other than the, the the first reading behold the day is coming burning like an oven if you are not connected prepare be prepared for destruction if you are not ready if you have your own ways your own temples own whims and fancies own ways of life the word is going to disturb you my dear friends the word is going to disturb you be prepared be prepared the lord is challenging you today we want god to have a soothing life you know for us to give us a soothing life that's exactly why the prosperity gospel people are so much attracted towards that god who provides us jawa jire he would provide us this with things so people will gather to those churches where the prosperity is entertained you come to our church your problems will be solved you come here and you will be healed definitely he is a healing god your rafa we call him there's no problem but my dear friends he's a challenging god we are in the journey towards jerusalem and according to biblical scholars this dialogue happens in jerusalem temple jerusalem temple so according to luke's gospel one of the synoptics john luke mark matthew and luke we have a chronological order clear journey towards jerusalem all these sundays we were had been reading from the on in the way towards jerusalem and now he is in jerusalem scholars say this is the holy tuesday the second the second day in the holy week now he is about to be crucified he has already on monday he has already purified the temple now we are that's the background septuagint of the gospel so we are reading the we are having that background now and the lord is saying this temple this temple would be destroyed just imagine my dear friends just imagine those words that temple is their life you know the presence of god they come all over the world from all over the places to worship and they believe heaven and earth is met there and then lord even the lord is saying i'm this temple is going to be destroyed and they are completely shattered completely broken they could have killed the lord then and there it was such a terrible statement god is like the sun you look at it look at sun in the morning at the horizon you will enjoy it beautiful in the evening you know go to the beach you find the sun is submerged in the in the horizon it's beautiful gorgeous that very sun when it is perpendicular in the noon is terrible because it is close now the same sun you enjoy from afar it burns you when you have it closer when you journey towards the lord when you go towards him don't expect him to 
console you, soothe you, give you chocolates and smarties and all the things that you want. No. He will challenge you. He wants you to be holy. He wants you to be holy. So that father wants you to be pure. That's exactly what happened in Jesus' life. When he was journeying, no miracles. Now no miracles. He's focused on the cross. That's exactly, that's exactly how they were disturbed. You read John's chapter, second, second chapter of Gospel of John, and the Lord is saying, I will break this temple and rebuild it again in three days. And then, then they said, even King Solomon took about 46 years. Who are you to say that you are going to build it after three days? They never understood it. They never understood it. So they, they were, their focus was on that place, that walls, that particular place. They had their holy of holies. Only high priest can go once a year. Once a year only. And then holy places, only priests could be there. And we find the place where only men can be there. And women and children and outer courtyard. Even there was this gradation. There is, there is this separation in the temple. That's exactly why in John chapter 3, the Lord is saying to Samaritan woman, there would be a time where you would not worship in Jerusalem and that temple, that mountain. There would be a day where you worship the Lord in your spirit. Not a place. God is in you. The Lord is, the Lord is en encouraging us not to focus on a place that the Lord is going to be dwelling in your heart. For that, He had to break that temple. Their idea, their frame of understanding how God should be. You know, it's very difficult to break the frames. Sometimes we frame people. You want your wife to be in this frame, your husband to be in this frame, your child to be in that frame. It's very difficult when the frame is broken. That's love, my dear friends. That's love. Exactly, God has to, He had to break it. It was a prophetic statement. In, in the Lord is speaking about this destruction in 33 AD. And, and the Gospel of, of Luke is, Luke is writing the Gospel approximately about 80 AD and in 70 AD Emperor Titus completely breaks the temple completely breaks the temple and Luke remember, remi remembers how Jesus said this temple is going to be broken why that temple is to be broken the, God is, the Lord is going to dwell in your heart in a very different way that's exactly why they were worried about the time. When and what are the signs? That's exactly a wrong question to ask. When the Lord is breaking them, their focus was gone. He wanted to say that I am that temple. He was speaking about his own body. And you'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, chapter 3 verse 16. The Lord is saying, you, your body is the temple of God. You read... 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 6 verse 18 again it is said your body is the temple of God and he is here how, the temp how you become the temple you, how you are going to experience that presence is with the Holy Spirit my dear friends once you experience that Holy Spirit the Lord is saying you become you are going to become a sign not an icon. People want to be icons. They want, to, they want to have their focus on them. No. They want to be Babel Towers. You know, it's I, always I know. The Lord, you, are, you will be no more. He is going to dwell in you. The Lord is saying, people will despise you. People will hate you. People will reject you. People will corner you. People will... People will hammer you, break you, kill you. Even your own kith and kin would despise you, betray you. But don't worry. That's our life, my dear friends. 
you come to a point you are you come to a point at the river sea show you enjoy the sea and he will call you to the depth launch you to the deep and the then peter was there he had a great catch the lord said i will make you fishers of men leave your boat and come that's our journey that's that's our journey all what we gather here all what we embrace here my focus my targets is of when you have to have him as your focus only he he will be there at the end, at the end of time only he will be there with you my dear friends because of him once he becomes your focus the world would reject you the lord is saying do not worry this is will be your opportunity to bear witness they will lay their hands on you and persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues and prisoners prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake this will be your opportunity to bear witness settle it therefore in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer for i will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or correct break my dear friends once you feel this presence inside of you you will have that leading you will enjoy him within not the pleasures of the world you will begin to enjoy him and once when you enjoy him you will have the direction where to turn what to speak we are in a we are in a terrible strait we are in terrible catastrophe we know a lot of struggles we don't know how to do but once you are connected you will have that direction in that direction you will have that presence my dear friends every opportunity every rejection is going to be opportunity for you to witness witness your life would be different the lord is saying st paul is beautifully saying finally you have to live a life of purpose you have to live a life you don't work you should not eat so everything would come to end but then you have a duty in this world duty to fulfill duty to complete let's focus on that that duty is to love for you to love fill your life with the love of lord holy spirit would fill god, your life with god's love once you have it you will enjoy it and once you enjoy it you will have that direction within all everything would be in vain everything would collapse but you will have jesus as your focus jesus as your ideal he'll be there with you so worry would not be in a in a in our life because we know that he is there he would direct us and lead us have this thought in our mind think about our own temples where what we grab and hold on everything would fall and fail yet your connection with him your inner presence that you enjoy in him would be always with you amen